Hello and welcome to the second tutorial on the Cocos 2DX multi device tutorial series and in this tutorial we're going to show you how to design backgrounds so it works on iOS, Android and in theory Windows Phone and maybe any other devices that it will run on. So basically what we have or what we've created is a little template which showed something similar in the previous tutorial. If you watch that tutorial or you've got that template from the description then you will notice that the difference in that there was three extra lines and those three extra lines that are roughly around about here were basically the lines from Android devices or the three common Android ratios and to design for Android and iOS we recommend just using these three designs so basically the red one is iPhone and iPhone Retina because it's the same ratio, resolution is different but the ratio is the same this blue one here, this light blue one is the iPhone 5 because it's wider and this yellow one is the iPad because it's not as wide as the iPhone but it is a lot taller and obviously if you want to design it for portrait you can just basically rotate this 90 degrees and you'll be A-OK, -okay. there'll be a link in the description to this template also there'll be a link in the description to the portrait template as well if you don't want to manually rotate this one that's a-okay and basically this entire canvas size is 2272 by 1536 so 2272 by 1536 if you're aware of the different sizes of these devices you might think where have we got 2272 by 1536 from as there's no iOS device as of now that has a resolution of 2272 by 1536 in any orientation and what we've got it from is for the width we got the highest width relative to its device size so we have an iPad Retina which is 2048 and the iPad because it's the same ratio it will just include that within the iPad and then you have the two iPhones and what we're just going to do, open up a text editor and in this text editor we'll just show you what we're talking about so an iPad Retina is 2048 a iPhone Retina is 960 and a iPhone 5 Retina is 1136 Those are, these are basically the three resolutions we're going to be dealing with because the non-retina iPhone which is 480 wide in landscape mode is the same ratio as this and the 1024 iPad uh, non-retina iPad is the same ratio as this one as well um, so but what we've done is scale these up so they are on a similar size as the iPad so this times by 2 oops, uh, e equal what the hell equals 1920 this Times by 2 equals 2272. So 2272 is basically the widest of all three of these. And for the height, it's a similar process 1536 for iPad, 640 for all the iPhones. All the iPhones either have 320, which is non retina, and 640. And we can just say the 320 is the same as 640, but it's just a high resolution. So if we do want the assets, we can just scale them down. And then if we scale this one up as well, so time by 2 equals 1280, 1536 is by far the the tallest one. And because of that, we're going to be using that. The height, so we're, we, we have a canvas of 2272 by 15, by 1536. So what we do, when we design our backgrounds, we recommend that you design it within this canvas size or maybe you're going to adjust it slightly maybe you're going to try and make it better and if you do let us know and we'll improve ours you design it within this canvas size of 2272 by 1536 so it fills right to the edge and right to each little corner but this is the crucial part the main aspects of your background keep within the red lines because this is the smallest device you're going to be putting it on keep it within the red line and you might think okay I'm sort of following what you're talking about but what about Android? On Android when we're going to actually implement the code in the app delegate in tutorial 4 what we're going to do is we're going to implement for all the different iOS devices but for iPad we're going to implement it based on either a non-retina iPhone resolution so 480 by 320 in landscape or 960 by 640 if the resolution is quite high basically if you have a Android device that has a high resolution mm -hmm. most 
sorry about that, most likely it is a more powerful device and because it's a more powerful device it can handle bigger assets and more complex assets without lagging or lagging as much I should say. So that's what you want to do, uh, or, but that will be for tutorial 4 and like I was saying you want to design your background so it's flush to the edges but the main aspect is within this. So take for example you have a temple and <laughs> one second let me just turn this off sorry about that uh, so you have a temple and there's some temples here you have some some water here maybe some sort of low river stream and on this side you have some sort of mountains and on this side you have some sort of trees and on the top you have some clouds and those are actually coming into the red border as well so you can see it on all the devices but the main aspect that you want the user to see is the temple that is the main aspect the other parts enhance it a little bit but it's not too much an issue if they don't see it so when you do actually save it out as the iPhone here so basically regular iPhone and retina iPhone you'll get the temple and maybe a bit of the extra stuff when you save it out as iPhone 5 you'll get the temple and you'll get low you'll get all the extra stuff at the sides but you won't get anything from the top when you save the iPad you'll get all the stuff from the top and the temple and a little bit from the sides so you're still getting the main aspect of the background and but you're still gaining a little bit of the side stuff as well but again the side stuff isn't important let's show you the size of this which I did mention before 2272 by 1536 and you might think how do I basically save this out. So simply what you want to do when you save here for iPad you change the canvas size to 2048 by 1536 so now we have this obviously you will want to remove these lines but I'm gonna just leave them in for now but just keep in mind you will want to disable and remove them or what have you uh, and then you save it out like this for regular iPad it's simple, you just tone the image size down to 1024 by 768, but the actual ratio is the same. That's for the iPad done. So imagine now we want to do the iPhone 5 and 5S image, canvas size. We want to change the height to, if you recall here, we were talking about the height, and the height of an iPhone is 1280 based on this calculation to get you up to the same sort of scale as iPad Retina because obviously even though we have an iPhone which is a Retina device and like iPhone 5 and iPhone 4 they are still smaller um, so they have a lower resolution in comparison so we just change this to 1280 and yes I know okay so we have or listen remember you will want to disable the lines then you go to image image size and you don't want to say we had 22 by 72, 22 72. Maybe they'll release an ultra retina maybe one day, and this will be relevant. And then you do 1136 like that. You save it out, and then you do canvas size again. You change the width to 960 because that's the regular iPhone here. Save it out, proceed, and now we have basically this red and again you want to disable the lines you want to save this out and then you want to resize it again and save this to 480 by 320 but this is obviously image size not camera size we don't recommend that you support iPhone anymore but still do the asset because chances are you'll support Android devices that are lower resolution but are still commonly used therefore you'll still need these assets and then save this out again A little, another little technique don't use save as if you're on Photoshop. Uh, don't do save as PNG or what have you. What you want to do is file, save for web. This used to actually be named save for web and devices. I don't know why they changed it because this is still relevant for devices and you can leave everything by default unless you really know what you're doing and if you change something you know that it's going to suit your needs. You just save it out and this will get you a better quality image on whether it's on a website or whether it's on a, a device. I don't know if you've uh, ever made an application and you might have noticed 
we did it recently. We created an application called Super Jet Bunny. The link is in the description. And we, when we saved out the, not the backgrounds and what have you, but when we saved out the icon, we saved it as save as. And we noticed on our device, it didn't look that sharp. It looked alright, it still looked good, but it wasn't as sharp as some of the other icons, even though it was immensely high resolution on the computer. And we tried it on an iPhone, an iPhone Retina, I mean, an iPhone Retina, iPad Mini, an iPad Retina, but it just didn't look as sharp as some of the other icons. And we resized it, I mean, we saved the it as save for web, and lo and behold, it was as sharp as the other icons. So that's a little tip for you. Whether you're saving for device or web, use the save for web feature in Photoshop. I'm pretty sure GIMP or any other tool that you use has something similar. Or maybe the regular saving function is a okay. But yeah, that's how you design your assets. You want to design them, like I said, if so, so it fills, I mean your background, sorry, not your assets. So, so it fills the entire screen. Then the main part of your background is within this red border. So it's always visible. Then you save them out. Here's another little tip for you. Let's just go down. When we save our assets out, we uh, background, I should say, depending on what sort of game you're doing, we find that you can save free backgrounds, save on the size of your application, so it's a lot smaller, but still get the same effect. And these are the basically the sizes: 480 by 320. Next one is 11, 36, 640. No, one second, seven, six, eight, and twenty, forty-eight. By it was fifteen, thirty-six. Modify this slightly if you want it. This will cover the regular iPhone. This will cover iPhone four. It will cover iPhone five, and it will cover iPad. Because they're a very similar resolution anyway, having them at this slightly higher resolution of 1136 by 768 on, let's say, an iPhone 4, for example, it's not really going to affect performance too much. So it's A OK, but you're having less assets. For iPad, you get 2048 by 1536. What you can do is go even further and try and make them exactly the same, which is sometimes what we do as well. And what I mean by that is we will do 5. 68 by 384 I believe 1136 by 768 2272 by 1536 and basically this is the same ratio throughout so you can just design the background on this resolution you can save it out then you can resize it save it out resize it save it out and you just have three assets which are exactly the same ratio and when you use them, they will work great because there might be a little bit that's not on screen, but that's a okay. But obviously, if you're creating something that's a panning background, you're gonna naturally want something huge or uh, something that reveals more, maybe tiled as you drag. But again, that's more of a complex game that depends on it depends on your game's needs. This template, as I mentioned, will be in the description along with the portrait one. If you have any questions, feel free to message us at support at sonarsystem.co.uk. The email will be in the description. You can also comment on this video, directly message us via YouTube. The next tutorial will cover how to design assets, aka the stuff that goes within here. So maybe a player, a couple of enemies or some buttons how to design them. Designing them isn't as complex as, as designing something like this, so it's a-okay. And as usual, thanks for watching and have a nice day.